Thank you so much for joining me. And before we get started, I would like to thank some people who made lovely comments. Here's the names of the people. Make sure you check out Christina from Christina Creates, her YouTube channel, and also Christine with Create and Craft with Christine. Oxygen said they are a new subby. Diana, hello. Diana never misses to comment on my videos and neither does Amy. Carol, you also do all the time. I appreciate that. Diane, she lives in Victoria, Australia. Carol was also at Rachel or Roxy's uh, class. Vicki was at the uh, Roxy class. Rhonda, my thoughts and prayers are with you. I hope you're feeling okay. Helen was at the Roxy class. Christy said she's a new subby and is also a fellow Aussie from that beautiful country. Uh, my sister Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Love you. Uh, Jessie at Vintage Studio 717. Make sure you check out her Etsy store. Jan was also at the Roxy class. Cindy, you never forget to comment also. And then Samantha Williams is a nurse that I worked with in California. One of the best nurses I've ever run across in my life. Hi, Sam. Let's get started on the video now. Now, one morning prior to the Fleur Woods workshop starting, those of us that wanted to could go to Carrington Falls. It was about four miles or seven kilometers from uh, Robertson. It is a plunge type waterfall across from the Kangaroo River and located in the Southern Highlands region of New South Wales, Australia. As you can tell by me not having to wear a jacket, it was an absolutely beautiful morning. There's me, Rachel, and Christine. And along the walk, there was so much inspiration and beauty. As we went down to where the falls actually ended, Zoe told us of the story of a pool where the Aboriginal women would deliver their babies in this pool, almost like a water bath. For this next bit of footage, I have sped it up a little bit. I just wanted to show you everybody working on their piece. That's Rachel there. And if you recall from her final piece, she had painted it. We started all of our pieces on those frames and then eventually took them off the frames and worked them into whatever shape we wanted to work them in. You can see there are a lot of supplies down the middle of the table that were brought by Fleur for us to use. And then like I think I said in a previous video, people did bring a lot of supplies and was very 
enthusiastic about sharing with each other. Some people used different colored threads as they were working on their piece. There was a lot of artwork on the wall in the studio. The studio was beautiful, it had a lot of space. That table there was a table for you to be able to pull anything from that table and use it. There was also a sewing machine there. That's where we molded our clay pieces and then we would allow them to dry. And then over here in this corner, there was always coffee and tea and cakes that you could have throughout the day to snack on, including cookies and fruit. So today is Thursday and there is a beautiful mist in Robertson. And look at this beautiful magnolia tree. Isn't that just stunning? Just beautiful. There's another one here. And I'm out walking around because unless they're trying to pull this American's uh, leg that they said there's a llama. They may be all inside laughing at me saying, oh, she thinks there's a llama on the property, but there really isn't. We sent that crazy American out there to go try to find a llama. We'll see if I find one. So it's the day before our very last day of stitching, and it has been absolutely fantastic just lovely everybody is so kind in the class sharing all of their textiles and beads and threads and fabrics do you hear the cicadas Here are some still shots of my walk. It was a beautiful little bird house. And then again, some of those pictures of those beautiful magnolia trees, which we don't have magnolia trees that I know of in Arizona. Look at this. Isn't this lovely? So I'm coming up and there's a pot with like some little ducks in it. And then look at this hanging in the tree. Isn't that just lovely? And then we have uh, just like a little pond. Could be some fish in there, who knows. And just look at this mist, isn't this beautiful? And then the sign to Green Door Studios. Oh, look at this coming up here. Look at this. Wow, isn't that fantastic? Just growing out of that. 
that stump there. Wow, just beautiful. As much as I do not like spiders, I thought this was quite interesting to see this spider web with the dew on it. And as I come around here to this bush, you can see all of that beautiful dew in that spider web. And right there is a spider. Ugh, I don't like that though. So just so you know, the girls, those little Aussie girls were not pulling my leg. There is a llama on the property. Come here, baby. Come here. I have since learned that it is probably an alpaca and not a llama. Come here, come here. Come here. Oh, here they come. Come on, maybe they think I have treats. I don't have treats, lovies. Oh, wow. Come here. Oh, look at how close up. Oh, wow. What a beautiful animal, really. Ah. I'm sorry, I don't have anything for you. No treats. No treats, lovey. I just, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are amazing women. And I feel <laughs> so privileged to have spent this week with you. And just a massive thanks to Zoe as well. Yeah. For yeah. 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 And here's a picture of everybody that attended the workshop. So I'm waiting for Sarah, Rachel, and their mom to pick me up. And I thought I would just let you know of a little things that are a little bit different here. On the menu, if it says tomato sauce, that is what we call ketchup in the United States. A uh, passing lane in the United States is called um, stay in the, you know, this lane unless you're overtaking someone. Uh, there's tons of cockatoos around the birds, which we wouldn't see in Arizona. Then on Friday afternoon, March the 8th, after our class, I had every intention of taking the train from Robertson to Sydney. It would have been about a three hour train ride, but Rachel, Sarah, and Juju offered to take me in their car, which was, you know, so sweet of them. And I got to meet Alfie, who, as you can see, was asleep in the front seat with Rachel, and then did come back to the back with me. After they dropped me off at my hotel the next morning, I got to try Vegemite. Now, it is an Australian food spread made from leftover brewer's yeast. It was developed in about 1922. It has a really strong, salty, and bitter flavor. I didn't quite care for it, but the good thing about it, it is high in the B vitamins. This is just a quick view from my hotel room. And I didn't take very many pictures as I walked around that day, but I did stop and have a little snack at a restaurant, and it was a bruschetta. On Saturday, I wandered around the harbor by myself, 
And then I took a all-inclusive dinner cruise. This is the beginning of the cruise. And here is the Sydney Harbor Bridge, which happens to be a steel through arch bridge. It spans the Sydney Harbor from the Central Business District to the North Shore. As you can see, it was a beautiful, clear, blue sky day. The bridge is the 10th longest spanning arch bridge in the world, and it's the tallest steel bridge measuring 440 feet from the top to the water level. Now, as our boat was going underneath the harbor bridge, you can see the opera house in the background there. I did a little bit of research and the Sydney Opera House is a multi-venue performing arts center. It is located in the foreshore of the Sydney Harbor it was designed by a Danish architect, but completed by Australian architectural team. And it was formally opened by Queen Elizabeth II on October the 20th, 1973. Construction on it began in 1959 and it was built in four stages. It was at the cost of a hundred and two million dollars. The building covers 4.4 acres of land. The building itself comprises multiple performance venues, which together host well over 1,500 performances annually. So let me tell you about this dinner cruise. It was with the company Journey Beyond Cruise. It was a small boat. There were probably not more than 50 people on the boat. I was extremely impressed with the food. I started out with a fresh beet and quinoa salad. And then I had a pumpkin ravioli. It was with butternut and pumpkin with goat cheese and a sage brown butter sauce. And then my dessert was a crumble apple pie tart. And then as the sun started setting is when the spectacular views really showed. And then we ended off the evening with a beautiful firework display. And then on Sunday, March the 10th, Rachel and Sarah invited me to go watch their nephew in the 2024 18-foot Skiff World Championship race.
Uh, we boarded the ferry to follow the race, and it was sponsored by the Australian 18 Footers League. Now, our ferry was right at the starting line. And again, with a little bit of research, I found out that this was the 86th year that the World Championship has taken place on the Sydney Harbor. It started in 1938. It was absolutely amazing to watch the three-man crew jump from side to side of the sailboat to maneuver it through the harbor water. Now this sailboat was the main sailboat that we had come to the race to watch. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't win the race, but they gave it a good, a good try and it was fun to watch them. Now at the end of this uh, little clip here, I do have a picture of the winner, but it was fun to watch a uh, Bigfoot race. Then on Monday, March the 11th, I took a tour of the Blue Mountains. It was a day trip leaving from Sydney and one of the places we stopped was the Featherdale Sydney Wildlife Park. It was a sanctuary and at first I thought this was a wombat but it, I don't think it is. The more I think about it I'm not sure. I looked it up and was doing a little research. You Aussie people tell me what is this here? I don't think it's a wombat. Wombat. I'm probably saying it wrong too. And then I came across an albino of one of those little creatures. And then there was the koala. And it was very cute to see him or her up close and to get a picture of them and then they said um, they told us that they just eat greenery and just kind of hang out don't do much of anything so coming up is a little bit of a blooper no one was hurt including me in this video no, oh, not in my toes. No, <laughs> get out of it. So instead of trying to do selfies, I had somebody else that was at the sanctuary take a few pictures of me and these little kangaroos. Pascal. The dingo ate my baby. That's a dingo. Okay, you guys, you need to tell me what TV show that line is from. Our next stop was Scenic World, which has four main attractions. The upper right-hand corner, kind of in yellow, that is a cable car that goes across the gorge. Then the blue going down is also a type of cable way. Then we walked in that green area down there in the rainforest. And then the red going back up is a railway car. Alrighty, we are off, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the Yellow Ride, the Skyway. 
So my name is Hanako, I'm your driver here at the very back. I'm going to be taking you back across to Sydney. Well, so I'll point out a few things, and the first thing being, those of you on the right-hand side in the middle, you're going to be able to see Katoomba Falls. Here we go, on the right-hand side, Katoomba Falls. So it's one of the tallest waterfalls we have here in the Blue Mountains, reaching over 200 metres tall. Now, something very special about that waterfall is that that water has never ran dry. Next was a cableway that passes over the edge of the cliff and then over 1,600 feet to the bottom station in the Jamison Valley below. It takes about four minutes to um, go to the bottom. Over there on the left are the Three Sisters, which is an iconic area there. I've sped this up so that it didn't take so long, so I hope it doesn't make you dizzy. This area was about a 90-minute drive from downtown Sydney. And so as we traveled down into the valley floor, we're going to be into a rainforest area. So now I'm walking down to a railway station and as you can see the path goes all the way down and around and it's in the rainforest here. So as I'm walking along all of a sudden I see these things. And at first I think, oh, they're real. And no, <laughs> they're, they're plastic flowers. Oh my gosh. Had me fooled for a minute there. Okay, and I'm continuing to walk along. And look what we have here. They have made uh, like a butterfly. Isn't that gorgeous? How inventive is that? Just right along the rainforest here. Again, walking along, they've created this beautiful scene. So I find this fascinating, all the intertwining of all of the branches of the trees and what have you. And then as I pan up to the tops of the trees and you can see the sky peeking through. So once again, I'm walking along and I come across this little much mushroom patch that they have put in here artificially, but still it looks cute. Ung among all of those ferns up in there. You know, something different, kind of fun. Again, through some research, I found out that J.B. North, who was a stockbroker and a mining agent, born in England and moved to Sydney in 1852, 
set up transportation from his coal mine. Now this is called the Three Sisters and it is a commonly told legend that these three sisters lived in the Jamison Valley as members of the Katumba tribe. They fell in love with three men from a neighboring tribe, but marriage was forbidden by tribal law. The brothers were not happy to accept this law, so they decided to capture the three sisters. A major tribal battle ensued, and the sisters were turned to stone by an elder to protect them. But he was killed in the fighting, and no one else could turn them back. These Stones were formed by land erosion around 200 million years ago. And finally, the railway, which at the steepest section of the track, it is an incline of 52 degrees. <laughs> Look at my foot. I'm bracing myself because I'm afraid I'm going to fall off. Oh, oh shoot. Now, those people that know me know I love good quality chocolate. And I'm not sure if they sell this brand of chocolate anywhere else besides Australia. But you Aussie people, you have got to try this chocolate. It is to die for. So here's my box. I haven't opened it yet and dug into it. This was one where you got to pick out which kind you like. I love orange peel and chocolate and almonds and chocolate. These are just chocolate disc and they just melt in your mouth like butter, smooth butter. So if you're a fan of chocolate and live in Australia, make sure you check out this store. And then last, but definitely not least, Sarah, Rachel, and Juju took me to the sewing basket and to Spotlight. And I will do another video showing you what I got at the sewing basket. So for now, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, and bye-bye.